Hello everyone and welcome back. The Moth Keepers are an interesting pair of Zotic that has very neutral function to them. The fact that they can be used with any Hunter subclass available allows us to create a numerous amount of builds with their utility in mind. As I've done the Strand Hunter version before, I want to try the following out on other subclasses as well just to see how good they come out. So with no surprise, we'll start with the ARP subclass version that focuses heavily on the blinding nature of the build. With the build, you can jolt, blind, confuse and get shielding all in one action. Also, your sidearm once amplified can do some really dangerous levels of damage when chucked into the fray. And with your moths of course doing some hilarious damage as well. So let's make a start. A start with aspects, you're going to want to have flow state where defeating jolted targets makes you amplified. Then you want Tempest Strike where sliding and activating your melee unleashes an arc uppercut attack towards enemies. The following aspects will help greatly with making us amplify quickly without the further need of your arc focus perks to do so. Mainly it's the reload buff that will ultimately improve the build. For fragments we have Sparkle Recharge where while critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy regenerates by 400%. Spark of Beacons where while amplified, your Arc Special Weapon Final Blows blind targets, Spark of Shock where your Arc Grenade Jolt targets, and Spark of Ions where defeating Jolt targets grants Ion Traces. Having Spark of Beacons is a must have for the build as it will allow us to continuously blind targets from each special kill made. This combined with Moth Keeper's effect of also blinding targets allows us to control all sorts of enemies within our range, which makes it harder for most enemies to run away when targeted. The Sparkle Shock and Ions combo will tie the build up once we get our grenades flying. Plus, Sparkle Recharge is a fell safe buff that will greatly increase our ability regen when things do get dicey. The Fragment Choice accompany the playstyle you may be aiming for and will greatly benefit the weapons in play as well. Within the mods and stats section, having both resilience and discipline at a high level will be important for supporting the build. Having a bit of focus into strength as well will benefit the user as this will be used here and there. Having a tier 5 stat for a 1 minute 16 cooldown is fine and generally good enough. Recovery at tier 10 will grant us a 30% damage reduction for the build with a bit of a trade off for my recovery as shown. The following level is required for surviving lethal hits in endgame and can be life and death if not fully prepped for certain encounters. Although we don't have additional mods or fragments to help further support this area, our Moth Keeper's secondary effect of grant us a 22.5% Void Overshield can help with absorbing enough force to prevent enemies from killing us outright. Discipline will be at a tier 10 as well for a 37 second cooldown. As your grenades are replaced and cooldown is drastically reduced, your option with using your grenades often will drastically become more commonplace as the build goes on. Truthfully, having just grenade kickstart would be enough to support the build for the user. However, in my case I like to make sure our key stats are always available no matter the situations we are in. So, having impact induction for a 12% grenade regen, orbs of restoration for a 10% ability regen, bomber for a 12% grenade regen, and distribution for a 4% will be the ideal option to pick. Of course, if you like, you can invest more into your strength stat and move from there. The next section will be focusing on armor charges and additional mods that are recommended for the build. Charged up will give you a plus 1 to how many charged stacks you have, while stacks and stacks will increase orb collection to plus 2. After that, having a harmonic siphon and powerful attraction mod will allow us to create and collect orbs of power within our venicity. Lastly, we have the ammo finder reserves and scavenger mods for increasing the payload of our special and heavy weapons. This is important to have since the build will not have any other ways of producing special ammo fast enough. For weapons, we have three selections for you to go ahead and follow. We have Bastion as the main primary on hand which will be useful for taking out unstoppable champions and also doing good damage against mages and above. The following has not been used by many players in quite a while even though it does still pack quite a punch. This may be because we have more ways of stunning certain champions now, while at the same time the weapon did receive a significant amount of nerfs. Overall, it fits well within the build right in terms of being a showstopper when needed. Secondary, we have the Indebted Kindness with Beacon Rounds and Adagio. 
Now, although people will state to use the version with Volt Shot, I found this version better simply for the raw damage. We have ways to make ourselves amplified and also jolt targets, so this isn't much of a concern to me. Here though, this will be the main bread and butter of the build, which will allow me to do all sorts of damage against all targets within my range. It's also very effective with taking out Barrier Knights with a few hits, so the added damage buff does make a significant change. Lastly, Heavy, we have the Swarm of Depth with War Portal Genesis. This here will cover all engagements as we get ourselves into, but most of all will help the moment we do run out of ammo for Prime and Secondary. There is no limit to which Arc Heavy you have to pick here, so the choice is yours, although I recommend you hold off from using Rocket Launchers or Grenade Launchers. If you can't get the Swarm from Zavala, then look out for Zer and Banshee who may sell the 7th Seraph Swarm or Planet Stride Arc Machine Guns. So I have tried out many special base builds in the past before, and they've all had the many pros and cons to them. They can either run very smoothly and with no problems on the line, or run terribly and leave you into many runnable states. How to go about running a special build all relies down to the user knowing what their weaknesses is, and then finding a fix that can help elevate these issues from the build. This build for an example does a lot of things such as stunning unstoppables with his blinding moths, sidearm rounds, or fusion rifle IEs. It can also lock down areas very easily with a singular grenade or shot from a sidearm, can jolt targets and further enhance our build speed, and has a machine gun that can be used for both minor enemies to bosses depending on the situation. With a thanks to Moth Keepers and Indeed Kindness slash Spark of Beacon's Blunt Effect, we can easily run a Master or Grandmaster encounter with a lot of ease in mind. It's definitely got a unique way of going about and taking on endgame enemies, as our damage is moderately good, and the Blinding Effect extra trait allows us to be aggressive if we choose to do so. On the other hand, there are limitations to all of this that I have noticed over time, which can and can't be always fixed. For example, running out of ammo for both primary and special can be very easily done if you don't have the right mods applied, such as Special Ammo Finder and Arc Reserve mods. When you do run out of ammo, you will have to either wait for the game to give you ammo, or wait for your team to clean up the rest of the enemies before moving on. This isn't a huge issue on most endgame content since you can use your machine gun to cover the rest. Unfortunately, not all missions and games will allow you to run a machine gun if you ever need to have a, say, overload weapon on hand. This is why the build is only adaptable to some Grandmasters and has a better usage rate when being applied in non-champion based content. Even then, as long as the champion and minibosses you face match your gear fine, you can get away with most issues here and there. Its appeal of applying Jolt and Blind Effect consistently will greatly benefit players who enjoy trying out new abilities, but also like to experiment as well. As the only downside of the build is the ammo region factor, I can see future use of the build being used in encounters to where teamwork is highly needed for keeping back all types of enemies from approaching. Within an effective team, the build can do so much with how little it has on hand. So I hope you all enjoyed today's build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. Well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and I also recommend you view my playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all. I hope to see you again soon.